Good morning all. This is uh, from Lidl. It's a Parkside 20 volt battery 4 amp hour. This is for their 20 volt power tools. Now this one has cell balancing. So we'll open that up, take a look at the cell balancing circuitry and compare it with the 12 volt battery, which is a three cell. This is a five cell. Well, it's 10 cells actually, five across the top, five across the bottom. Um, but I'm just going to show you some footage I took in the Lidl store because there is a huge uh, variety of the 2 amp hour and the 4 amp hour batteries and particularly the chargers. Take a look at this. 2 amp hour batteries, pack 20 a one no cell balancing, pack 20 b one which does have cell balancing. 4 amp hour batteries, HAP20B3 with cell balancing, and up here HAP20A3 without cell balancing, and battery chargers PLG20A1 which is 2.4 amps. Here we've got PLG 20A4, 2.4 amps. And here we've got PLG 20B1, which can do 4.5 amps if it's got the bigger battery. That's a confusing array of stuff if you're not sure what you're looking for. So it looks to me like they're throwing in some of the older uh, non-balanced batteries at the same price, um, just hoping to <laughs> clear old stock, I suppose, for people who don't really care about this sort of thing. I do, though. Anyway, let's get this thing open and... Um, oh, that needs to come out. And take a look at how the cell balancing works. Now, just comparing the previous uh, 4 amp hour battery with this one, to all intents and purposes, they look identical. We've just got the uh, A3 indicator there and B3 on the new one. Okay, uh, looks like torque screws, so let's get this open. Uh, this is interesting. Look, they're calling it uh, 4 amp hours, 20 volts, 80 watt hours. But of course, 80 watt hours. Um, is multiplying 20 volts by 4 amp hours. Well, these cells don't stay at 20 volts for very long. They really should be doing it at um, 3.7 times 5, not uh, 4 volts times 5. So it's a little bit cheeky. Right, screws are out. Uh, how easily does this thing come apart? Oh, very easily indeed. I'll just take the spring. Oh, no, that's fitted on there quite well. Um, oh, that's a fuse, isn't it, with the hole cut in the uh, strip of metal. And, oh, look at that. It looks like the little uh, tester board, the state of charge indicator, is on a connector. Now, I seem to remember these were quite difficult to get apart on the previous version. I'll just have to watch back a video. Well, this little board is extremely neat. There are two little studs. Uh, going through the board, but that just is on a little four pin connector. That's Really really nicely done. In fact, I'm going to open the old battery just to compare how it was done on that previous one Yes, in the old one, it's very different. There's a pair of wires running up to a board Which is up in a groove on the lid there. And I seem to remember it was quite difficult to get out So let's give that another try Yes, now the reason this was difficult to get out is because under these uh, illuminated covers there's this sort of light guide plastic molding and the surface mount LEDs are actually sat up inside it. So to get this board out, you'd have to bend it away from the plastic molding and then slide it up out of these grooves. But it's really hard to do. And I don't think I'm going to bother. The new one is so much better. Look at that. Yes, this is just so much better done and they haven't insisted on having the, oh it's hard to see, um, the plastic light guides that run up into these lenses, well they're not lenses, they're just covers, um, quite so close to the PCB surface mount LEDs. They've 
left a sensible gap so that this slides in nice and easily. It's just so much better done. Yeah, this shows it a bit better. You can see that sliding out without it being trapped underneath that uh, little bit of plastic molding. So get the B3 version of this four amp hour battery, if for no other reason than this wonderfully implemented uh, state of charge indicator. I mean, it's only three LEDs. It's not exactly very sophisticated. But moving on to the cells, let's have a look. So these look like they're branded uh, Parkside. You know, on one of them, you can just see the K before side. Uh, something 18650P, 2000 milliamp hours, 3.6 volts, they say. INR 19 stroke 66. I'm not entirely sure what that means. Uh, the date is 2021-01-16, so back in January this year. And I don't quite know what hash 4 volts means either, if indeed that is 4V for volts. So this is a 5S array, 5 cells in series. You can see that the top and bottom pair are simply paralleled on both sides. So giving you the 4000 milliamp hour capacity. Right, let's take a look at some of the electronics. So the main chip is an LGT 8P30. They've put a blob of something on it, but you can still read through that. Uh, this is a 5 volt regulator. It's just a 78L05. And there isn't a huge amount else on here other than these uh, 6 pin or 5 pin. I think they're... Oh, I can't see whether they're 6 or 5 pin. But these four here are marked C3. Now the 12 volt battery had two chips, um, again, of this SOT. Well, I'm not sure that it is a SOT 23 because they're smaller than that, aren't they? That's a SOT 23. So this is a smaller form factor six pin chip, but it had two of these C3 chips. So this is clearly the balancing chip because this one's got four of them. Now, unlike those little cell balancing boards that have inductors on them, there are no obvious inductors on this board um, there are possibly some capacitors down here. I suppose these could be inductors, but they'd be a very tiny value. But uh, no, they look like capacitors to me. So maybe this is a capacitive transfer chip, but I think it would be quite difficult to find data on this. Um, there are another couple of chips here. I'll just try and get the numbers of those. And uh, these ones, which are six pin, all three of them say 72K. So do they work in conjunction with the C3s uh, to do the balancing? These are actually five pin. There's a six pin footprint underneath them, but they only seem to have five pins. This middle pin on this side doesn't seem to be implemented. So I'm just going to open up the 12 volt uh, cell balancing battery to see if it's got, well, two of the C3s and one of the 72Ks. And uh, yes, that seems to be exactly what it has. A couple of these C3 chips. And this one actually isn't a 72K, but it's a K72. <laughs> so I don't know whether they changed the naming convention for this chip uh, between these two batteries were made, but it seems that's the way this works. There's a K72 in this case and a couple of the C3s. And then on this one, we got four of the C3s and three of the 72Ks. Now this battery pack doesn't appear to have any cutoff MOSFETs um, because you can trace a path from the most positive terminal here down to the positive connector and then from the negative connector through the fuse and down to the most negative um, terminal on the battery. So I believe that the um, low voltage cutoff MOSFETs must be in the power tools. And in fact, I've just opened up this um, sort of air blower thing. And you can see here on this board that there is a pair of MOSFETs down there. Let's just try and take that out. Yeah, so two MOSFETs there probably in parallel and some sort of eight pin chip here, which might do the voltage measuring um, to cut this tool off when the battery voltage gets too low. And then I do remember when I took apart the dual 20 volt battery charger, 
that there was a pair of MOSFETs in there, uh, sort of back-to-back -back MOSFETs, which would of course be used as the cutoff for charging this battery. So when the uh, terminal voltage went above a certain level, then the charger would cut it off. So yes, it certainly looks like this 20 volt series doesn't have any of that cutoff uh, stuff in the, tool, in the battery. It's in the tool and in the charger, completely different to the 12 volt battery. Yes, here in the 12 volt battery, um, we've got the high current path is through these two big MOSFETs and the big current sense resistor. So that's ground through the current sense resistor through the two MOSFETs to this point here, which is P minus. So that's the negative of the pack. Uh, let's pull that out actually. Oh, I can't pull that out. Yes, I can. Bear with me. Um, yes, the negative of the pack, because um, there's the negative terminal, there's the big black wire that runs up to there. And then on the charging side, we've got another pair of MOSFETs here, which uh, the path is from ground, that's the most negative terminal of the battery, through the smaller current sense resistor, through these two MOSFETs, through these two diodes, and out to this terminal here, which runs down to this uh, T connector. And that's uh, how this battery is charged. It's charged between positive and T. There isn't actually a connector in the charger for negative. So this is the, um, well, when you charge it, current flows in through positive, conventional current, in through positive, uh, through the three cells. That brings you to this ground uh, through that current sense resistor and then these two uh, MOSFETs and these two uh, diodes and back out to the T terminal. That's the, char the path for charging this. But the battery has cut off both on the charging side and the discharge side. Not so much in the 20 volt battery. Strange decision. So that's what's inside the uh, park side. 20 volt, uh, this is the 4 amp hour, but they also do a 2 amp hour power tool battery with the new uh, plug-in state of charge indicator board, which is simply wonderful. And very minimal electronics, certainly no cut-off stuff, apart from this, uh, this fuse if you uh, put a direct short across the output terminals. Um, but with cell balancing, now I wonder when the cell balancing takes place at all times, which is possible. Or is it happening um, when the battery is being charged? Uh, or does it happen when it's being discharged? That's less likely, I suppose. So put this back together. Uh, that just simply drops in there. <laughs> it's simplicity itself to uh, take this part and put it back together again. Just align the spring with the uh, release catch there. And that's it. Yes, okay, let's get these screws in. So £25 uh, for this 10 cell pack, that's £2.50 per cell, they're 2 amp hours. And with minimal electronics in here, uh, apart from the balance circuitry and that protective fuse, this could be the basis of building some sort of power bank. Um, I was just looking at these, these standard uh, spade terminals. I don't have the opposite apart from these piggyback ones, so I'm just going to bend one of these out. And then you can uh, use these to connect to these terminals. So you could build your own multi-pack uh, bank of batteries using these pre-assembled things. They're, uh, they're actually quite handy. I'm uh, just going to see if this 24 volt bulb illuminates when I poke its wires into the connectors. Uh, yes, it does. So that's fine. 